Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining our CNS Solutions Challenge Educator Roundtable. And um, we are here with four educators who have participated in the CNS Solutions Challenge. They're gonna share their experiences with the challenge. Um, we will also go over the challenge and um, have time to answer questions. Um, but first to get started, I will introduce myself and feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. You can say um, your name, where you're from, where and, and what you teach. And um, I'll start with the introduction of myself. My name is Elise Gaynor. I'm one of um, the program staff here on the CNO Solutions Challenge by Digital Promise. I'm here with my colleagues, Krissa and Lisa, who are um, off screen, but they will be here. Oh, there's Krissa waving. <laughs> um, they'll be here to help answer any questions and participate in the, in the um, discussion as well. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Digital Promise, we are a nonprofit organization. Um, we build powerful networks and take on grand challenges by working at the intersection of researchers, entrepreneurs, and educators. And our vision is that all people at every stage of their life um, have access to learning experiences that help them acquire the knowledge and skills that they need to thrive and continuously learn in an ever-changing world. And then we work with Sienna on this project, hence the name Sienna Solutions Challenge. Um, they are a networking system, service, and software company. Sienna's digital inclusion program aims to mobilize the company's global workforce, leverage its innovation leadership, and collaborate with customers, suppliers, and other partners to bridge the digital divide. Sienna has committed to fund 10 million USD over a five year period on programming that promotes digital inclusion through greater connectivity, access to technology, and digital scaling, with a goal of expanding opportunities for over 100,000 underserved students in our global communities. So let's dig into what the challenge is. Um, the Sienna Solutions Challenge is a global design challenge inviting middle and high school students all over the world to design solutions addressing the sustainable development goals in their local communities. Um, if you're not familiar with the sustainable development goals, they are a set of, of 17 um, goals <clears throat> set uh, through the United Nations in partnership with many countries and organizations around the world um, around what goals do we need to achieve by 2030 to make uh, the planet more sustainable, habitable, and um, uh, encourage prosperity for all. And so um, using these goals, uh, educators and students will use the challenge-based learning framework to actually learn about their challenge and take action. Challenge-based learning is another framework that we really advocate for here at Digital Promise. Um, and it helps guides, it helps guide learners through a process where they can engage in a topic, learn more about it, um, investigate and, and really uh, dig deeper into the problems that they want to address, and then finally act to take action on whatever their topic is and create something that um, is meaningful for them and, and people in their community. So starting on September 1st, which is next Thursday, um, we are opening the submission portal. So educators may submit projects, student projects to showcase in the Sienna Solutions Challenge online gallery. And they may also apply for a $2,500 USD award to scale or sustain um, students' projects. The deadline for applying is March 1st. So we have um, you know, this window of time where educators and students can work on their projects you can submit your projects whenever you, you have them ready. They don't even need to be in the most final form at the time that you submit um, to go to the gallery or submit for an award, um, just enough to show us what you've worked on and um, share you know, where you're headed in the future with, with student projects. And throughout this process, Digital Promise and Sienna will also provide professional learning and mentoring opportunities to educators and students. And you can register now at siennachallenge.org. Um, registration is always open. Um, and then once that portal opens next week, then you can actually start submitting projects. 
So um, let's meet the educators who are here today with us. Um, first up is Victor at Caleb British International School in Nigeria. Victor, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? All right. Good day, everyone. Um, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Well, my name is Victor Okosun. I am a, uh, a teacher at Caleb British International School, Nigeria. I teach chemistry. And um, I really appreciate this platform that Sienna Solution Challenge is putting together. It's a wonderful one. It's a wonderful one. Uh, it has really helped me to improve um, my students, as in to motivate them and to make them um, have good attitude to learning. Uh, it's, it's a good one. I really commend you. And also, I want to appreciate um, my colleague who probably they are on the platform now or they will be joining later. I want to say thank you for, to them for joining this platform. Thank you so much. Great, um, we're gonna move on with Theod. Uh, thank you, Elsie. Uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Theod Nirinda, and um, I teach at Gaza High School in Uganda. Um, I'm a teacher of uh, mathematics. Um, Gaza High School is one of the oldest girls' school uh, in Uganda. And um, I'm glad that we participated in the Siena Solutions Challenge because it gave our girls uh, an opportunity to further uh, the projects that uh, they have been running uh, in the community. Uh, in the challenge, um, we, we ran a project that was geared towards uh, mitigating climate change uh, crisis and its impacts. Um, our girls uh, had visited the community to do other projects that were not in, in line with uh, the climate change, but uh, with time, uh, they saw that the community was uh, deteriorating as far as uh, the environment is concerned. And when the opportunity came uh, for them to participate uh, in the Siena Challenge, uh, climate change was uh, one of uh, the things that they took on so as to make an impact in the community. I'm, I'm happy to be part of uh, the discussion. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Galen. Hi, um, my name is Galen Jenkins. I am the middle school librarian at Rudolph Gordon School in South Carolina in the United States. Um, so I work with students um, anywhere from 11 to 14 years old. And for our project, we worked with our sixth graders who were about 11. And um, they picked um, various goals to investigate um, in our community. And then we had them present their solutions to um, various stakeholders who could actually give them good feedback on how they could affect change. Um, so this was a excellent way for us to introduce the global goals to students. And um, I think the challenge is a really effective way to engage students in their learning. Thank you. And we also have Jobert. Um, Jobert? Which I think, oh, here we go. Hi. Hi, Jobert. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm well. You're... Okay, um, my name is Jope Tingwenya. I'm an educator. I'm based in uh, Bulawayo, Zimbabwe at Evelyn High School. Um, I teach um, middle school and uh, high school, entrepreneurship education. Um, so the project that we submitted last year it's actually early this year, Recording right? Recording in progress. Um, it's it's a, it's a health, healthy eating, better education uh, project where our young learners uh, came up with um, a new bar. Basically, it was aimed at uh, 
assisting young people to, uh, to, to, to fight against um, chronic nutrition insecurity and uh, general food insecurity amongst the, 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 the young people. So Evelyn High School is, um, is a girls high school. It's located in the inner city of uh, Bulawayo. I've been a teacher. It's a government school. I've been there for the past uh, 10 years now. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Um, let's let's move to our first question, which is how does the CNS Solutions Challenge give students an authentic purpose for learning? Um, and you can speak specifically from what you've seen in your classrooms with your students. Um, and we're going to start with Victor to kick us off with this question. Um, and then the rest of you all just feel free to jump in after um, Victor goes ahead and speaks. All right, thank you very much for that question. Uh, Sienna Challenge Solution, in fact, has been um, a platform that has helped educators to engage students effectively. Um, the fact that um, the, the idea of, what is it called now? project-based challenge. The idea of project-based challenge has really helped to bring learning from abstract to reality. You know, students don't release their interest until when you are able to show them the application of what they are learning in class. And this is what Siena Challenge has helped educators to achieve, how they can actually bring abstract knowledge to real world in the project-based challenge. So that has helped um, educator like me personally, it has helped me to be able to get the interest of my learner to pay attention in class. And also the fact that it is competitive, you know, anytime you mention competition, students want to bring their best. They want to bring their best. So, when I told them, okay, this project-based challenge is competitive, uh, organized by Siena Social Learning, participating by other uh, learners all over the world. So they want to come out the best. So you see them trying to bring the best. And it has really helped educators to, to get the best from learner. And the fact that there is a reward attached to it. And you know, when you tell the student, you are not just doing this, for fun, there's a reward attached to it. You see them giving out their best. You know, that's what uh, learning is all about, bringing the best from students in a particular topic. And finally, the fact that um, they are solving real world problem. You know, Siena Challenge has given us a platform of a project-based challenge that can solve SDG goals, as in real world problem in our society. and when they discover that they are solving a societal problem with the knowledge from classroom, you see the joy radiating all over them. So this is what Siena Challenge has really helped educators like me to achieve in my classroom. And I say kudos to you and keep it up. Thank you very much once again for the opportunity. Thank you, Victor. Uh, I think from my end, uh, this challenge, um, it challenges students to be creative and, um, and think outside the box um, as they apply the skills and knowledge uh, that they gain in class. Um, it gives them that platform where they can gain skills um, like research, uh, teamwork, collaborative, uh, problem solving, uh, digital literacy, to name a few. You know, and these are skills uh, that are needed in this uh, 21st century. You know, um, the, the world is in, in need of uh, digital uh, citizens and uh, uh, the challenge is one way through which uh, our students can, can become uh, digital citizens. And um, we know that uh, with digital citizens, um, they are in a position to solve these old problems and uh, the arm bells are very loud and clear that uh, without uh, these uh, skills, uh, it's going to be hard for these students to create a just and uh, a sustainable world. So 
this kind of platform gives them uh, uh, that chance where they can attain these skills that can enable them to, you know, to be the change makers within their societies. And to me, that's what I, I find as authentic learning in my view. Thank you. I agree. I think so many things that my colleagues already mentioned, they, um, students use this opportunity to really think outside the bubble that they live in. It gives them kind of the global perspective. And then in our case, we ask them to look at this global problem and think about where in our own community do we have the same problems? So it's kind of giving them that connection to people around the world who deal with the same kinds of problems that we do. Um, we focused especially on giving them an authentic audience for their work. Um, so bringing in experts from our community, connecting our community to our school, um, and then allowing students to really pursue their own personal interests in school. And I think at least in the US, <laughs> um, there is a very strict kind of curriculum and it's difficult to, to break out of that and allow students to bring their personal interests into their learning. So this challenge really gave us an opportunity to allow students to engage in a way that they could collaborate with other people who have interests like them and then show the world what they could do when they were given the chance. Okay, thank you very much. Um, in my case, I would say it, uh, the Siena Solutions Challenge gave my learners an opportunity to look at the world around them and then um, solutions that are relevant to their context. So in knowledge acquisition, um, they are living in and secondly, uh, they are acquiring the 21st century skills, which are relevant to the communities that they are actually are living in. So from that perspective, it actually gave them uh, this motivation to be actively involved. So for this year's uh, project that we're working on, it was under the entrepreneurship education. So um, um, as much as they are acquired, they were also gaining uh, knowledge about entrepreneurship. And uh, to them, uh, coming up with the project that was well accepted by the community, I think it was really uh, a killer. It was, uh, it was really, really more working with the community was actually uh, motivating again in the sense that they were engaging with the world outside the school uh, through social media interactions. And uh, they also participated in, um, in two conferences. They participated in, um, um, in, in, in workshops. They were presenting in workshops. They went out to other schools and shared what they had done and so on and so forth. So it, it really gave them um, a purpose in life. They saw that learning as we know it it's not really about um you know acquiring knowledge in classroom for application later in life but they can learn and come up with uh, impactful uh, products even at, uh, at at high school so to them it was, it was something exciting and it really brought, brought authenticity to the whole um uh, learning experience and maybe I also mentioned that the global perspective that uh, my colleagues uh, are mentioning came in handy because um, in, in coming up with their, pro their project, they had to interact with um, other people outside their own space nationally and even outside the country. And they participated in the Youth Made Festival. To them, it was, it was something big, um, interacting with uh, students from across um, oceans. It was something that, that really, um, showed them that what they are doing is appreciated. Um, um, Jober, I think you froze, so I'm not sure if you can hear me. 
all over the world. And lastly, I think the whole uh, the class. Yes, I can. Hello, can you yes, hear me? You just you froze up a little bit, so I was just trying to see if you were still there. But you're back now. I can we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So um, my last point was that um, the, the the challenge actually gave them an opportunity to bring the world into the classroom as much as it took the class out of the the learning out of the classroom into the world. So so that relationship really brought the authenticity. It gave them uh, the purpose that learning is not really about a teacher standing in front of you, but it's something that can be self-directed, something that can be individualized uh, with the teacher coming in um, as the guide. And to me, maybe I would say the very fact that in some instances they would take me through some of the things that they would already done, for example, manipulating social media, their communicate, uh, communication using social media. It was a plus to me as much as it was motivating to them uh, teaching a teacher on some of these, um, you know, digital platforms that are already there. So basically, that's uh, the experience that I would say uh, was, was, was mind-blowing to my, to my students. Thank you. Great. Um, <clears throat> So I'd love to hear you all speak about, about how you aligned or integrated your challenge with your existing curriculum. Or, and we know that um, you all are coming from very different contexts and you know subjects, grades. would love to hear about your experience, um, seeing what the challenge offered and, and how you aligned it with what you were already doing in the classroom. And we're gonna start off with Theo to answer this question. Uh, thank you, Elsie. Uh, uh, around two years ago, uh, Uganda moved away from a content based curriculum to competence based curriculum. Uh, the content based curriculum, uh, the teacher was, um, you know, the know it all. The teacher would come and stand in front of the class and would deliver the content as well. Um, while in the competence based curriculum, uh, the running goes back to the students. So um, the, the time that um, uh, Siena Solutions Challenge came in, um, our students, I think, had spent um, close to two years at home uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And um, they had gone home just uh, when we had just introduced the, the competence-based culture. And uh, in this culture, they expected to research, uh, work in groups, uh, present in class. So um, it was timely, I can say. Uh, so when I learned of the offer uh, from Lisa, I tried to gather a few students of mine and, uh, you know, I introduced uh, uh, the initiative and it was in line what is expected of them in their new curriculum. So the students started working on uh, different projects, uh, I mean, different ideas. Um, they started researching and uh, shortly they returned at school. And that's when they decided that it was uh, important to build on the projects that they were doing in the community. And the fact that uh, uh, the environment was somehow deteriorating, they chose to, to do um, a project uh, that is mitigating climate crisis and its impact. Um, so we decided to visit the, the, the nearby schools and um, with the name of sensitizing uh, these uh, students about the need to conserve the environment. And uh, the, the new curriculum basically expects the, the students to, you know, to move out of their fold class, uh, classrooms uh, to the community to try and uh, see if there are problems which they can solve. So, uh, I can say that uh, uh, it is syncing well with uh, the curriculum that we are undertaking. We are now in the second year. And uh, it's no wonder that when students opt for uh, projects during class, um, like this term, uh, the students in their geography class, a good number of groups uh, uh, chose to do projects uh, under climate change 
and uh, they were doing a lot of wonderful projects uh, right from uh, recycling by using plastics to urban farming uh, you know making dust beans um, some uh, planted more trees in school and they created more awareness among their peers uh, because uh, they feel that climate change a crisis is, is a monster and uh, it calls for concerted efforts. So I, I can say that uh, it's, it's building on to what you expect them to do in their classes and uh, I can't wait to do more projects uh, under CNA Solutions Challenge. Thank you. Um, so at our school, um, I work with all grade levels and I chose to work with our sixth grade English teachers. So students were about 11 years old for this um, project. And we focused on the teacher's informational text unit. Um, so we focused on giving them text that reflected the global nature of the goals that they chose and then local news articles and things like that that they could then analyze for the things that the teachers needed to teach like text features and um, and things like that um, so a lot of the content in the classroom the existing curriculum was taught um, by the teachers doing um, some very targeted reading and um, the students created an annotated bibliography with their work. Um, so that hit a lot of those curriculum standards that we needed to focus on. And then the presentation of the project incorporated a lot of the writing and communication standards that we needed to hit. So the project was almost just the venue that we used to teach the existing curriculum um, and the pushback that I get a lot of um, integrating this kind of learning into schools is that we can't take the time to, to do these big projects. And this was a great example of how we were able to do that, hit all the curriculum we needed to hit, the test scores were still good, and we engaged students on a whole nother level. So thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. Yeah. Um, then in, in my case, I would say, um, almost like in the case in Rwanda, 2017, there was a change or a reform in our curriculum from it being more knowledge-based into being competence-based. So um, the Siena Solutions Challenge, therefore, uh, came in to fit into what um, the national curriculum was actually advocating for. And I would say, personally, I embraced the curriculum when it was introduced, but there was a general um, resistance among the teaching staff, you know, because of um, lack of motivation and other issues uh, around our politics and so on and so forth. But um, to me, it, it, it was something that was welcome because then when the curriculum was introduced, I was not yet trained as a teacher. So when I got the training of being a teacher and um, I got an opportunity to, to implement the Siena Solutions Challenge, I actually saw a match in what the curriculum, the national curriculum was um, expecting of my students versus um, the challenge-based uh, learning. So from that perspective, it really worked out very, very well. Um, for me, in the sense that with the uh, competence-based curriculum, students are expected to acquire knowledge, which has always been the case, but aside of that, they're expected to acquire uh, your 21st century skills, collaboration, creativity, innovation, and so on and so forth. So um, the challenge-based uh, learning therefore came in handy in, 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 um, in meeting those competence uh, base skills that we expected to, to come up with in our learners. And I also say with the revised curriculum, there is now continuous assessment of learners, which the continuous work that they do throughout the year um, 
is 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 added onto the final uh, exam mark that they would do as their as their school leaving exam. So the project therefore assisted them in coming up with um, the marks that they needed for their for their final exam. And lastly, um, being an, an entrepreneurial project as it were, it actually helped us in the entrepreneurship curriculum, which is not uh, school-based, but we have a situation where our students have to compete with other schools uh, nationally. So using, using the challenge-based learning, we managed to meet um, the criteria that is detected to us by the Junior Achievement Zimbabwe, of which last year the major concept was based on, um, on, on innovation. So from that perspective, they managed to meet um, the innovation component. And of course, uh, all these other components like communication, leadership, and, and so on. And uh, as a result, they actually, they actually participated in the, in, in the Junior Achievement Regional Company of the Year, where they, they are competing with other nations. Um, they're competing with Mauritius, South Africa. I know there was Nigeria. There was, um, uh, I think Uganda was there. So it was, it was really an interesting uh, thing to them. The very fact that what they had done uh, took them to, to the regional competition. Okay, um, good everyone. For me, I would say it was a very easy one for me to um, be able to blend the project-based challenge organized by Sienna Solution Challenge with my curriculum. Because um, the school where I teach, Caleb British School in Nigeria, we promote core skills like critical thinking, um, creativity, and so on and so forth. So this general challenge has availed me the opportunity to be able to promote this key in my students. Aside that, because we want our students to have these core skills, these 21st century skills. In our school, we have different clubs that can promote that skills. The club I belong in is Young Entrepreneurs Club. So in Young Entrepreneurs Club, the students are expected to solve problems. They're expected to uh, do critical thinking. They're expected to be creative. They're uh, they expected to solve problems. So when Sienna Challenge Solution came, it was a plus for me because it is actually in line with the school club that was instituted to promote um, critical thinking in students, so it was just easy. Like Vika Pot challenge that we did in last project, it was just from the curriculum, a particular topic, air and water. That was how I was able to manipulate that project. And when the students saw that, ah, wow, this topic actually has application in the society, in the real life. You can see that they were so interested, they were so, inspired and they want to learn, they want, everybody wants to participate. So this activity-based learning, our school has really um, wants all teachers to embrace it. But Sienna Challenge has just given us a platform to make it easy for us. And I would say it's a good one, it's a good one. I look forward to do more of this. Thank you so much. Great. Um, so for our next question, we found in um, our um, survey at the end of, of the end of the challenge that 95% of the educators who were surveyed um, said the challenge helped them meet their teaching goals for the year. So I'd love to hear from you all um, in what ways did the challenge help you meet your teaching goals? And we will start um, with Galen kicking us off with this question. Thank you. Um, so I'm kind of in a unique position as the middle school librarian. I don't have a class that I teach every day. Um, everything that I do, I work with teachers to teach in their classes. Um, so for me, um, 
the year that we did this challenge was my first year in a new building. And one of my goals was to do a sustained project with a teacher. Um, so this really gave me the platform I needed to kind of integrate myself into the unit from start to finish um, and support them. And then the other goal that I had specifically was integrating more hands-on learning um, opportunities for making for our students. Um, so we integrated things like 3D printing so the students could model and practice that skill um, and everything from uh, making pin back buttons in our makerspace to um, just using materials that they found to create games and things like that. So those were two goals that I had that this single project helped me achieve for an entire grade level. So I was really pleased to have been able to do that. Thank you. Okay. Hey, um... I think uh, on, on my side, um, as an educator, uh, it, one of my goal is to always churn out students uh, that care about their communities and are always looking uh, for solutions to the challenges uh, that are in their communities. And uh, by us participating in this challenge uh, was one way uh, of meeting my target uh, because uh, when students uh, move out to these communities to try and find out what other communities are facing and, you know, they try to solve these uh, challenges and uh, they work hand in hand with the uh, uh, local leaders in the community. Uh, to me, uh, that's uh, what I consider to, to be a success. Uh, and, you know, um, it gave them a challenge to research further about uh, the UN Global Goals. Um, so I'm sure when they participate in the upcoming challenge, um, they are going to tackle different uh, you know, uh, global goals. And uh, as educators, we have a role to play as far as uh, fostering the, the 2030 UN agenda is concerned. And um, I, I keep looking forward to that. Um, so it's it's a good challenge. It's a platform which can you know help you realize uh, the different skills within your students. And uh, I keep looking forward to such challenges. Thank you. All right, for me, it has really helped me to achieve my targets in the classroom. Like one of my two major targets in my classroom is to be able to inspire my learner, to be able to motivate them so that they can take teaching beyond the four corner walls of the classroom. Most students, when they finish learning the classroom, when they get home, they will forget everything they've learned. So I want to make learning to go beyond just talking in the classroom. I want them to be able to take it outside the classroom solve problem with it. So I always look forward to inspire my students so that even when the teacher is not there, they will still be learning on their own. So Sienna's challenge has really helped me to meet that target uh, by helping, by bringing, forth, uh, by bringing this uh, project-based challenge, students now see reason why they should learn. They, 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 they now see how they can solve societal problem with the knowledge uh, they are acquiring from the classroom. So that has really been an inspiration for most all my students, you know, especially there's a joy that comes when you solve a problem, especially the last um, project we did, we, we were trying to solve problem for farmers. And when we, um, when we, we, we visited some uh, farms, and we were now selling our ideas, giving out our projects to them. We see how happy those farmers were. So my students were motivated automatically. They were inspired automatically. So even when the teacher is not in the class, they are doing research on their own. So that's 
that's it, my target always when I get to the classroom. And Senna's Challenge has given me opportunity to achieve that goal. Another goal that I always look forward is to be able to bring critical thinking and collaboration, the ability to work together. You know, no man is an island of his own. So I, I want students to work together to achieve uh, a common goal. And Siena Challenge has really afforded us an opportunity. And I will say thank you so much for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so in, in my case, I would say I have uh, three goals that I managed to achieve thanks to taking part in the Siena Solutions Challenge. Uh, the first goal was that of obviously covering um, the curriculum, uh, the content part and the skills part. So um, during the, the learning time, I, I had an opportunity to travel outside the country. So I had six weeks um, of, of absence, but even in my absence, my students were learning. So the very fact that um, using challenge-based learning puts the learner at the center of the whole learning process. It therefore made me um, achieve that. I managed, even if I was, uh, I was out of school for, for six weeks, my student managed to, to, to cover. I remember at some point communicating with the deputy head and she was like, no, your students are doing very well. Of course, we found someone who's helping them through, but really the feedback that we are getting is that they are, they are, they are working on their own. So I would say I managed to cover the content. And when I came back, I discovered that even the skills part was, uh, was actually covered. So on that call, it was, it was really a, a, a check. And then secondly, um, under entrepreneurship education, our, our goal when we, we set up at the beginning of the year, we actually want to compete um, nationally. We also want to compete uh, regionally and even globally. So using the SENA uh, challenge, uh, as, uh, the, the SENA solutions challenge, we actually managed to, to compete uh, nationally and we came position first, as I've already um, explained that part. We also participated regionally. And uh, the Sena Solutions Challenge uh, Sustainability Award itself to us was the global competition that we took part in. So that very fact of um, us competing at, at national level, at regional level, and at global level, uh, to me was a success. And lastly, um, in, in our context, technology is still being viewed with some uh, suspicion. It's integration in, in the learning, teaching and learning. So as, as educators, of course, we're allowed to use technology. The few uh, gadgets that we have, we do use them. But personally, I've been advocating that let's also allow learners to bring in their own gadgets into, into the classroom. But there's been some resistance from um, some teachers, from the administration, even some parents are not yet comfortable uh, doing that. But using the challenge-based learning uh, framework, we actually managed to make them aware that they can use these digital technologies appropriately to meet um, the 21st century uh, core skills and to actually meet you know, the knowledge acquisition that our curriculum demands and uh, the digital skills that on paper we are supposed to, you know, to infuse in the learners, but practically because of uh, the bottlenecks that are there in terms of technologies, we are still finding it hard. So I would say um, I, I managed to, to, to make a point that we can actually integrate a technology in the classroom for the good of uh, the teaching and, and learning process, as long as we, as, as the teachers and the educators, we, we are there to guide our learners on how to go about it and to also be in a position to accept that they are digital natives, they understand, at least in our context, they understand these technologies better than we do. And if, if we put them at the center of learning, they, they can actually assist us in, in, in navigating um, 
technologies. Uh, so basically, I would say those are the three goals that uh, I managed to, to, to score as a result of uh, the challenge. Thank you very much. Great. So we just have a few minutes left. And um, another thing that we that we received from the survey is that 95% of educators who 95% of educators who were surveyed said the challenge helped them build and develop um, relationships with their students. So with just a couple minutes left, um, would love for each of you to just share a few sentences about how um, the challenge supported relationship building between you and your students. And we'll start with Jobert. Um, so I would say in my case, um, since, since I've already mentioned that I was, I was out of the cl uh, class for six weeks, sometime during, um, during the time we we're working on, on, on our project. When I came back, I actually discovered that there were learners that were maybe taking a back seat when I was, I was in class before. But when they had that time of, of working on their own, they developed this, you know, the, the, the courage to stand up and, and, and present uh, themselves. You know, they discovered, they, 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 they discovered that they can actually be good communicators. And um, from that perspective, I then had to, to get closer to such students and understand them even better. And uh, maybe what initially made them, you know, take the backstage in class and uh, why they had suddenly, you know, bloomed to become, uh, to become who they are. So from that perspective, I would say, you know, the challenge was really helpful. And, and secondly, it also made me understand individual needs of, of these students. You know, in my case, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a girl's school. So there's, there's a lot of emotion going on and so on and so forth. But because of the challenge, our, our approach to teaching was sort of relaxed. And the very fact that it was relaxed, we had individual work, we had uh, pair work, we had group work. It wasn't, you know, the formal uh, way of doing things that we've been doing uh, such that I walk in, I deliver content and, and, uh, and move out. So the very fact that it was, it was a relaxed kind of an environment, it then made everyone become uh, friendly to the teacher, understand the teacher, and above all, the, the teacher himself understanding uh, the individual needs of the learners and uh, then addressing them. And maybe besides the relationships with the students as it were, it also helped me to, to relate with some of the parents. So understanding the student um, itself then make me be inquisitive of how they are relating to their parents, the role of their parents in their education and so on and so forth. So, and, 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 uh, and I would say it, it actually helped the, some students we had, uh, we had situations that needed the, the psychological services to intervene. And I would say all that came because we had this kind of a relaxed learning environment when we were implementing um, the Siena Solutions Challenge. Uh, thank you very much. For me, I would say that um, the challenge has really helped me to relate well with my student. I don't know if you've had a scenario whereby student would dislike a particular subject because he does not like the teacher. You know, it <laughs> happens. It happens. Because yeah. he does not like that, he will just dislike your subject. But Sienna's challenge has helped me to build a kind of relationship that my student, they see me as a teammate rather than a big boss. So that I enjoy a lot, that relationship I enjoy it a lot. So they can easily confide in you they no longer see you as a big boss. They are no longer scared. And when they are no longer scared, they can easily come for you for help and you know how to help them. So it's a good one for me. It's a good one for me. Thank you very much. Um, I think from my end, uh, nothing um, <clears throat> gives me joy like uh, working alongside my students, uh, a common goal. Um, and I can confidently say that uh, this challenge brought out the best in uh, 
most of my students. Uh, you could easily, you know, get to know what kind of skills that uh, some of these learners are having. And uh, surprisingly, um, there are things we could, you know, learn together and uh, other things I could learn from them. So it, it created that kind of environment uh, where we could exchange really. And um, I can't wait to start uh, the next phase of challenge. Um, they're always asking when the challenge is going to start. And this uh, year, I am not sure how I'm going to handle the numbers because the excitement is. <laughs> So they are excited. They are looking forward to you know more engagements and you know that's the kind of uh, environment uh, as a teacher I would love to have with my students. Thank you, Victor. You made me laugh. The the big boss. They really do see us that way. <laughs> it it comes across as like oh well you know you tell me what I need to do and I'll do it. And I think that's one of the things that this challenge really empowers them in a way. And, and several of you mentioned like their understanding of technology is even better than ours. How they choose to leverage that technology is really powerful. And so kind of balancing the relationship between a student and a teacher um, is, is part of the power of this challenge. Um, for me as a librarian, it gave me much more sustained contact with the students. I was able to build a little bit more of a relationship outside of, hey, what kind of books do you like? <laughs> um, and really talk about the things that they care about, the things that make them um, engaged in their learning and to encourage them to take the risks and know that we will be there to support them. Take the risk and then we help you. Um, but this is all about putting themselves out there. And if they don't trust you and if they don't feel like they can take those risks, the challenge won't be as successful. So I think that's to, to take those risks and, and make that real learning happen. Great. Um, so we, yeah, we have about five minutes left. I wanted to leave some time for Q and A in case um, anyone watching had any questions about the challenge. You can feel free to unmute yourself, or you can write something in the chat. Um, can I ask a, a quick question? I'm curious as to how the panelists came to their final ideas. What was the process that you used to develop what your focus idea was going to be at your school site? I'm curious about that. Okay, if, if I may go first. Um, I guess when I introduced the, the challenge to the students, uh, they all came with different ideas. And um, that time I remember we were meeting online because uh, they were in that first holiday due to COVID uh, pandemic. So the students came up with their different ideas and we met a number of times as we scaled down on the ideas and finally we, we zeroed on to what is uh, workable within our community and what was dear to most of them. And that's how we came up with a, a project that tries to mitigate a climate change a crisis and its impact. Okay, in, in my case, I would say, um, I, I just told them that we, we have to come up with um, the project that meets our, 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 our social problem, something that answers to, to the social problem that we have. And trust me, I'm not really sure how they settled for the, for the nutritional uh, project that they came up with. Because what happened, you know, this whole thing of technology, we were on, uh, on a lockdown, so, we were communicating through WhatsApp. At that point, you know, students being students, they will just uh, become so careless and uh, they waste their time on these trivial issues. So they created a parallel group and I didn't know about it. And in that parallel group, that's where they came up with all this, the, the idea and so on and so forth. And when they brought it to me, they'd actually met privately without my knowledge. 
and they'd come up with the with the with the book that um, already. So to me, that was quite exciting because um, the very fact that I just told them this is where we are going, and they did all the donkey work and they come up they came up with the project. It was really quite exciting. They they took the lead and. I was just there as, as a spectator who just told them this is where we're supposed to be going. And really how they they fitted the balls and nuts together. Um, I'm still not sure how they came about. Okay, you know, for me, we, we usually have um, a brainstorming session. Now during that brainstorming session, I will say them, come up with an idea, an idea that can solve problem. So you see them coming with different ideas. And then I will now harmonize the idea and see the one we can work on. That was how we uh, came about the bigger parts of the thing. How they were actually coming with great, great ideas. So I now help them to narrow it down. We want to solve problem of farmers so that we don't have most of their fruit and vegetable getting perished annually. So how do we solve that problem? And you know, in this part of the world, Africa, we don't have stable power supply. So how can we make, how can we solve that problem so that farmers don't lose their vegetable and fruits without depending on power? So they just come with different ideas. So I was just there to guide them and then help them to narrow down the idea. And that was how we came about our last project. It's just brainstorming session. Thank you so much. Um, so for us, I was working with children who really don't have a whole lot of life experience <laughs> yet. Um, so asking them about problems in the world, they were like, oh, you know, we need to save white tigers. And it's like, okay, well, you know, so that's why we came to the Cena Solutions Challenge was because we needed some framework for like, okay, what kind of problems are there? out there in the world. Um, and that's how we kind of had to narrow it down for them. For us, um, because of time and just maturity, um, we chose, I think, six of the goals to focus on. So we introduced those goals to them and um, they got a basic overview. They chose which goal they were interested in and we put them in like groups. And then they use those groups to come up with what problems they wanted to solve and the solutions for them. So um, ours was a really diverse thing. I think looking back at it, we might narrow even further so that students can, we don't have so many of the same things happening in the same, like we had three groups working on food insecurity and they all came up with roughly the same idea. So we should consolidate that and they all work together. Um, so that's something that moving forward, we would probably change. Great. So we're actually almost at time. Um, and I want to respect everyone's um, time here. But if you have any more questions, you can definitely reach out directly to myself. You can reach out to Lisa um, or Carissa. And um, we'll put our email addresses in the chat. And we're also going to have a orientation next um, Thursday, September 1st. So if you have any more questions that you wanna ask us, you can join that orientation. We'll go over all of the different details of the challenge, um, you know, how to get involved, how to get started. And then um, there'll be more time for Q&A and for um, asking us questions about um, how to get started. So um, like I mentioned before, the challenge is open now for educators to register. So you can go to cnachallenge.org at the type right, top right of the page, you can register now, and then um, you'll be added to our mailing list. So all of our events like this, when we have roundtables, when we have orientations, when we have sessions in the future with students and teachers and Siena employees to help um, teams work through their challenge, you'll be invited to all of those sessions. So um, you can register now. And then in the meantime, you can join us next um, Thursday, September 1st for our orientation. 
Um, so I want to thank you all for coming today. Thank you to each of our panelists for sharing your time and experiences with us. And again, um, I believe our um, contact information is in the chat. So if you need to reach out, feel free to contact us anytime. Thanks, everybody.